this is my current drawing. It's, um, I showed this before actually, I think, in another video. But, um, it's this kid who is, so, this guy is pointing his finger at this kid telling him where to put down his backpack. And I cut it up like this, so I have him, the shadow of him pointing instead of his actual arm um, down here, and I have his clenched fist over here and I have this kid putting his backpack down over here and as you can see I worked on the backpack a bunch last night and um, I'm pretty much done with this clothes I'm just gonna leave them so the next is to start working on this guy's arm and shorts and uh, this is the bat this is a post for the basketball hoop and that's really it it's based on this um, that I chopped up um, from the fence, which is the basketball court I play at in the summertime. Um, but I'm not working on today. I had a really long day. Um, so I'm gonna relax and just um, work on chopping up these images so let me see and I just wanted to show sort of some of my progress so one problem I've had recently is that I keep getting trapped into this three cell format um, which I'm uploading right here so like this is something I set up recently this is based on the same gazelle, the same game as when where the gazelle was playing, who I've drawn, I've showed you. It's also at the fence. Um, and this is uh, just a different sequence. The gazelle's not shooting right now, but... Um, these guys are all there. I love these expressions. Um, and then the ball is up here, and this guy is sort of reaching out for the ball. And I thought it was pretty strong I spent about like six hours on this um, before I came to the so I spent six hours chopping up this scene because this guy is very important actually he is in this amazing pose that I've been trying to figure out um, how to capture so let me show you okay <laughs> so this is it He's like, you know, stuck in between falling and landing on his feet. And he has this great expression on his face. And then over here, I might actually just do this. This looks good. <laughs> I overthink these things way too much. This is fine for this sequence. But um, I have these guys here. But there's another photo before this where he's starting to run. This is before he starts to fall. And it's... You know, and it's also perfect with this guy. And I decided to chop it up like this so their hands are meeting. Blah, blah. But the problem overall is this. This is a main, fundamental, crucial problem that I've been having with setting up all my future drawings. Is that I keep relying on this three-cell format. I even said... When I was trying to figure out how to combine this image with this image, I said, I'm just going to go back to the three cell format because no, nothing I'm doing with this is working um, and try to combine this. So I, so I pop up my three cell template and boom, it works perfect. <laughs> so maybe, okay. So maybe it's not entirely wrong. Three cells, one, two, three seems to be the perfect solution for all of my photo 
setting up. <laughs> blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Three cells, that's what works. Um, and it always works. Always, always, always. Um, and that's a problem because I don't want to do the same thing over and over and over and over. Um, especially with the way I've set these three cells up right here. I mean, there's all sorts of things I could do and I never want to do the same thing over and over. Part of me wants to justify it and say that, you know, newspaper ship artists for like, you know, half a century always use the same exact format, which was one, two, three, four cells. You know, they never vary from that. Look at all peanuts. By Charles Schultz, it's always four cells long. Unless it's a Sunday strip. On the Sunday strip, he'd mix it up a lot and experiment. But he would he took this uh, just very boring one, two, three, four sequential boxes and, and, and took it as far as he could possibly go. But I don't want to do that. It's just not in my nature to do the same thing for my entire life. Um and actually, it's funny I say that. I'm I'm such an. Um, this is not entire. I'm not being totally honest. This is four cells. What I'm working on now. But um. But most of the time I fit into three cells. So, so for example, I was, remember this guy I showed him in another video. I um, was trying to figure out how to. Do him. And um, and I said, oh, let's just. <laughs> Let's just break them up into three cells, and it and it worked perfect. Actually, it's not that simple. I spent maybe two months. No, I spent maybe a month trying to figure out this particular sequence. Um, and then he's even another great pose after this one, where his this arm swings out um, into the air, and it's this it's this great motion of his the arm swinging down and up. And but you know, it never works when I want to just do three cells of the same guy. Um, you don't want to repeat the same image three times, even if he's in a slightly different position. It just never works for my brain. Maybe other people's fine. Um, but I decided just to put the basketball up here. But instead of just having it a single image, I decided to break up like this because I was reading a lot of Vagabond, which is really smart, actually. I said to myself, I'm going to read... Um, Every single omnibus version of Vagabond, and I'm exposed myself only to that particular style from that particular artist, and I'm gonna unconsciously start mimicking him because the problem I was having is that I was reading tons and tons of comic books by tons of different artists using different styles, and I was getting pulled in every diff all these different directions, and I wasn't settling into a format or style of my own necessarily um and i wasn't formulating to sell my own um even by just doing things independently because i've been trying to learn as much from comics as possible so i said i'm going to expose myself just to vagabond and i'll intentionally subconsciously start mimicking him and that's exactly what happened and i started breaking he does a lot of this which is breaking larger cells down to narrower cells um and he does a lot of, a manga does this a lot in general, but they'll use one panel on a page just to cut away from the action and go and look at a specific part of the environment. And that has a sort of, puts everything into context and it has a very sort of zen-like effect. But this is perfect. So this is a perfect setup. Though. I'm very proud of this. Um, lots of failures. As you can see, that I've these are all my failed attempts that I'm going through right now. There's this other sequence where he has a ball like this. Fuck. I'm running out of battery. He has a ball like this, and before he, he grabs a ball, he's in this position. This is not bad, actually. But um, after about eight hours of work, I sort of, I got the perfect solution, I feel like, which is this, blah, blah. Okay, anyway, recently, I was just, I'm just going through my stuff. I even have other stuff. This is, you know, I had the idea of going through the court like this. You start with the leaf down here. Another three cell format. And then, because I really wanted to draw him sticking his tongue out. I'm running out of time and battery right now. So I'm going to speed this up.
So, is another one. I changed that and he made that. I took out the middle cell, but I don't even try to find that. Okay, so recently, I've been looking at Japanese characters because I'm like, my stuff's sort of Japanese and um, I'm going to embrace it and just go with it. Um, you know, I don't know. If you know the rapper Future, he uh, before he came out with this, he went on a sort of legendary run where he had all these albums that were... <sighs> you know, sort of depressed, but incredibly atmospheric and sort of stream of conscious um, after one of his breakups. And, um, and, and they were hugely popular. And he said that before he went on that run, um, he said he's going to take the, the, the aspects of a style that he knows people hate, hate the most and just amplify it by like 10 times. And that's exactly what he did. He went on this legendary run and had an incredibly unique sound um, that changed the game of, changed the sound of hip hop um, for years, man, even to this day. But anyway, so I said, I have this Japanese feel to everything I'm working on. So why not, I just, I'm looking at kanji characters and I'm breaking them down and simplifying them into these box-like shapes. So I forget what they are. They're all, there's no significance to what the words actually are, but this might be house in Japanese. Uh, it's probably not. That's a different one I did maybe, but I just broke it down and, and took its parts and simplified them just into these cells. And then I'll put my drawings into these cells. And I'm really excited to do that. But first I'm just blowing out as many of these as I can. Like this, for instance. This is a good one. This is power in Japanese, but I don't act, it's bothering me. I don't know if I like it. It's, something feels off about it. Disproportional, like one sells bigger than the other. Anyway, I gotta wrap this up. But they're getting more complex, as you can see. Anyway, I gotta go. All right, bye.